morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Millie Preble, and it's my honor to be sharing uh, Lexio Divina with you this morning. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Lexio Divina practice, it is an ancient practice that means divine reading. It is a way to listen to scripture with your heart because it is the Word of God. This kind of reflective listening allows the Holy Spirit to deepen the awareness of God taking the time to speak with us. It helps us move the prayer and the word from our head of knowledge to our heart of knowing. Lexio usually uses a gospel story, although any descriptive passage in the Bible will work. A modern name for this practice is also called the discovery prayer, and it follows the same principles. In Dan Burke's book, Into the Deep, Finding Prayer Through Peace, he calls it the discovery prayer, uh, but it follows the same principles. It begins with a reading, uh, a slow, attentive, leisurely reading, repeated, the short passage of the Bible that you want to reflect on. You want to look at what the text is saying, what is the author's intended message, and what does the church teach about this subject? The next step is reflecting. You want to prayerfully engage with the meaning of the passage and consider how it may be applying to your own life circumstances. You might want to ask yourself, what is the text saying to me personally in my situation? Where is God leading me in this situation? And what is he trying to reveal to me? What are the lessons to be gleaned? The next is responding. I have a short conversation or long one with God about the passage and its meaning. You might want to ask yourself, well, what can I say to God in, in response to this message that he's revealing to my heart? Should I offer Thanksgiving? or praise, or is it a time to offer a prayer of a petition or thanksgiving? The next step is resting. Allow yourself to rest and remain and ponder in the Word of God, allowing and inviting the Holy Spirit to draw you more deeply into His presence through what you've read. You might want to ask yourself, am I being patient with the Word? Am I allowing it to sink down into my heart of knowledge and knowing? What is the self-revelation that God is trying to reveal to me? And how can I make his presence known in the world through this revelation? And last is resolving. You want to allow this encounter with God to permeate your day, not just be a hearer of the word, to be a doer. James says. This will cause you ever to be ever closer and nearer to him in the word as you share it with others and invite him into your day to put into practice what it is he's revealed. You might want to ask yourselves, what is it that I can do personally right now in this moment with the word and the mission and the message that he's revealing to me? How can I carry this encounter with me through the day to all that I meet? How can I be his word to others? The Lectio concludes with perhaps some journaling and ends in a prayer of thanksgiving. So I'm going to invite you now to pray the Lectio Divina with me. So before we begin, I want you to center yourself in God's presence, as we know we are always in God's presence. Take some time to center ourselves, get comfortable in your chair, and try and try to screen out all the distractions that might be around you, whether you're at home or in another area that might have some distractions. So try and open yourself up to God's presence and be in that sacred space. Take a few deep breaths, inhaling deeply and exhaling. Just a few short breaths like this. 
quiet your mind, open your heart, let go of any tensions that you might feel, any worries. This is your time now just to be alone with your God. Try and pay attention to your breathing and just keep it slow and steady. As I read the text for the first time today, I simply want you to listen to the text and familiarize yourself with the passage. It is one some of you may know well, but I, I encourage you and invite you to listen to it as if you're hearing it for the first time. Try and let go of any sermons you've heard or your own thoughts around it. Let it be fresh and new and living word today. Today, this is about you and your experience of being present with God in the text. I want you to make note if there's a particular word or phrase uh, that, that speaks to you. And I want you to maybe circle it in your mind's eye and let God begin to speak to you through it while you listen to the passage several times. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This time, as I repeat the parable and you hear the word, put yourself in the scene on that very street. What time of day is it? Is it hot or is there a chill in the air? What are the sounds you might be hearing? The aromas? Where are you in the scene? What do the characters look like? What are the reactions of the passers-by? What are the people saying to one another? What is the mumbling? What emotions 
fulfill their words. Are you close to the scene or are you far away watching from a distance? On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. As I read this aloud for the third and final time, I'd like to invite you to put yourself in the place of the Good Samaritan. Close your eyes, and I'd like you to contemplate a life lived in self-sacrifice, self-offering, serving others. The beaten man was in physical suffering but we all have things that keep us in all sorts of suffering. Things that keep us from fully experiencing God's light and love and presence in our lives. What would it feel like to surrender our own pain in compassion and service to others? On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. 
but he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Do we separate ourselves from our neighbor, those different than ourselves, with different beliefs, cultures, physical characteristics? Do we think of others as our neighbor, or just those most like us? Do we justify our friendships, our interactions, our prejudices? Do we act as neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Having been stripped of his clothing, this person, beaten on the ground, was in a very vulnerable position. It could be me. It could be you. It would have been impossible to know who this poor beaten man was, what culture, religion, or race he belonged to. Do we strip away the outer shell and see that inner person, the child of God? Or do we judge on appearance? Do we let appearance decide our actions? Are we too busy or too wrapped up in our own agenda to have pity on another in need? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Can I have the compassion and mercy and love of the Samaritan? Can I put aside my own needs, my own schedule, and be present to another in their pain and suffering? Can I be the face of God, perhaps the only one they may ever see? Can I put myself in the place of the beaten man and understand the love and compassion that God has for me? Can I allow him to pour on the oil and wine of his sacraments into my wounds and heal me? Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? 
The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The Good Samaritan took pity on his neighbor. He lowered himself, humbled himself to serve another. This simple act of kindness to another human being serves as a conscious choice to love and respect every person that God places in our path. A selfless act, putting the needs of another before ourselves, acting in obedient love of one another as Jesus loves us. We will never look into the eyes of another and not see someone God loves. I'd like to end our Lexio this morning in a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, let me be the Good Samaritan. Let me be as Christ to others. Bring the Holy Spirit upon me to share the rock of your church, the rock of your word placed into my heart to be the foundation upon which I build my house. To know that when the storms come, Lord, your word, your promises stand firm. Let me put into practice all that you have placed in my heart to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Show me and help me walk through that narrow gate to know you, to love you, and to serve you, Lord. Let your words comfort those who know and love you and conflict those who do not yet know you. Give me wisdom, strength, and courage to live out my life in your word and your image, Lord. If I am the only gospel another hears today,